Hey, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com and in this video we're going to learn about using Joomla system redirect feature. And as always, you can find a written version of this guide at my website kevinsguides.com and without further ado, let's get started. So being able to redirect users is something everyone who has a website should probably learn how to do. Joomla has a very useful tool to make redirecting users easy. But first, let's just talk about what a redirect is and why we need it. Let's begin by taking a look at a user journey without redirects. So suppose a user requests a web page and then the page exists on our site. We're asking a question. If it does, then we send them to that page. If it doesn't, then they get a nasty 404 file not found error. And, and Joomla's default 404 page looks something like this. Now we can do a lot better than that. Suppose the user requests a web page. The page does not exist, but a similar page exists, or maybe they had a typo or they used an old link that we updated. Now, instead of sending them to that ugly 404 page, we can redirect them to the page that they meant to actually go to. So for example, if someone meant to go to um, J5 test, that's my test website, slash uh, help. Let's say they went to slash help. And really, they wanted to get to the documentation page. Well, we could see that, okay, they, they were trying to get to the help page, but we want to send them to the docs page. And doing this is pretty simple. First, go to your Joomla admin panel and log in, of course, then navigate down to System and take a look under the Manage section at Redirects. Now, this applies to Joomla 4 and Joomla 5. I'm using uh, Joomla 5 here, but, but it's the same for Joomla 4, so either one, same deal. Now, under Redirects, we can see we have a list of all the links that are set to be redirected. And if your redirect system plugin is disabled, like mine currently is, you want to make sure that is enabled because it's required. Just leave everything on as is and refresh the page. And it should say that the redirect plugin is enabled. Now we can see I have a list of all these pages that users have visited and have encountered errors on. For example, my documentation page again, that's slash docs. If someone typed in documentation, the full word, okay, well, that's going to be an error. Um, if I go back to that and do slash help, and let's say I did that a few times, when we do slash help, we can see that under the expired URL help, we have six 404 hits. So that means at least six visits have encountered a 404 error trying to get to that help page. Now, to fix this, all we have to do is click on help and we will redirect it. So instead of going to um, J5 test slash help, we want help to go to J5 test slash docs and enable that. Now there are many different redirect status codes. 99% of the time, the one you want is the default one, which is 301 moved permanently. If this is a permanent redirect, that means whenever someone goes to help, we want them to always be sent to docs and search engines will be reflected to update that. So if your old URL was slash help and you changed it to slash docs, now search engines will know that this is in fact the same page and we are just supposed to go from help to docs now. So if I save and close that, we'll see that help is now enabled. The new page is there. And if I go to g 5 testtest slash help, it now takes me to that documentation page like it's supposed to. So this will improve your user experience and it will also make people come to your website more or spend more time on your website because they will encounter less of these potential problems. We especially want to pay attention to the links that show up here with many 404 hits. If there's just one, we might not really care about it that much. But if you notice, like after, I don't know, a few weeks that that one of your pages has um, a hundreds of 404 hits, then you definitely need to look into what's causing that and redirect all these people to the page that they were actually looking for. Same thing applies for documentation links here. You can see I have documentation and documentation. If I wanted, I could just click both of these and we could batch update the selected URL to be 
j5test.hash slash docs. I update those links. And now we can see that all of those links take me to the documentation page. Another example I have is basically the same thing. I have a shop page um, and it's at slash shop. But if someone accidentally typed in slash store or slash shops, we would also want those to redirect us to the shop page. So instead of shops, we want it to go to slash shop. And now when I do shops, it takes me to shop. And when I go to store, it takes me to shop. So it's all the same thing. Now you will come across instances where like, like I said, where maybe you only have one or two 404 hits and you just wanna disregard it. Cause after you run this for a while, you will notice you will have like hundreds, thousands of entries possibly. And you just wanna go ahead every now and then look through the ones with the most hits, make sure that all the ones with the most hits are enabled and set up to redirect to the right page and the ones that are not. Once we are done, we can just purge disabled and that will get rid of all the ones that are left over. So that got rid of the two disabled links that only had one 404 hit. Of course, you do wanna make sure you look through and actually check the ones with more hits first and enable those before you do any purging. Okay, and I do have some final thoughts here. So if your website is going to be expecting like a ton of traffic, um, it's possible that you could actually run into a situation where you're creating too many of these redirected URLs. So say your site gets, I don't know, tens or hundreds of thousands of visits a month. You'll run into a problem where you'll have like a thousand pages under your redirect links um, from all the people that accidentally went to the wrong page for whatever reason. And in that case, you might actually want to disable the collect URLs option because it will be creating too many entries. Um, you might be better off at that point using something like Google Analytics to track what pages are not hitting properly, and then you can still come in here and manually update the links as needed. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Take care.